Hello and welcome to Finextra. I'm Josie Waite and I'm here at Cybos 2017 in Toronto. And joining me is Simon Paris from Finestra and Patty Hines from Salent. And we are talking about connected corporate banking. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. Patty, you have recently published a research paper on connected corporate banking. Can you tell me some of the highlights? So one of the reasons we started along this path is that us as research analysts tend to focus on the product segments, so things like cash management, trade finance, commercial lending, and we tend to report on them in those segments. But then we realize in an increasingly connected world, we really need to look at it end to end because the customers are really looking for a connected solution that goes across all of the product segments. They're tired of those silos. And Simon, your thoughts? So what we're seeing is exactly what Patty described. So the corporate customers, the customers of the banks, are not looking for a silo view of their relationship. They're looking for a holistic, aggregated view across their positions in lending and trade and cash and payments, but being able to do something about it, whether it's in one jurisdiction or in all jurisdictions, whether it's during business opening hours or 24-7. So this view of the connected corporate banking is something that's being driven by the bank's customers themselves. Your research included some interesting statistics on revenue pools. What is the revenue opportunity in corporate banking? So over the past six or seven years, we've seen really tepid revenue and really choppy revenue. So looking forward, however, we do expect to see a doubling in growth. So from 2% from 2010 to 2016, now we're going to be growing upwards to 4% up through 2020. And really that's a number of really improving macroeconomic factors. To some listeners, moving from 2% to 4% growth might not sound like much, but it's 4% on a huge number. It's close to a trillion dollars of revenue. So a 4% growth is very meaningful and all the banks are chasing it down. What is your advice for banks hoping to grab an outside share of those revenue pools? Well, really, as we're talking about breaking down those silos, integration is key. It's not enough to have good products in each of those segments. Everything has to really be very tightly linked together and really tightly integrated. And that's really important on the revenue side for cross-sell and really important on the operation side to keep things running very smoothly. And Simon, your thoughts? We encourage our customers, the banks, to focus on the target operating model they're trying to serve their clients with and then think about what are the first steps on that journey to that destination. And those first steps will logically leverage some of the assets and investments they've already made, but they will also deal with some of the burning platforms that break down those silos that they really need to uh, grasp with. What is the risk for banks that don't invest in corporate banking technology? Well, like any client, if they don't feel like their needs are being met, they're going to shop elsewhere. You know, yes, it is pretty difficult to switch relationships, and some corporate banks think that they have already grabbed that share. But increasingly, bankers are looking elsewhere, they're looking for convenience, they're looking for best of breed within the segments, and they're looking for integration across all of those silos. So you need to really look out for making sure that your product meets those needs. Well, yeah, we see exactly that. Customer service is both king and queen, and you need to delight your customers and you need to anticipate their needs. If you're functioning in silos, that's near to impossible to do. So customers want to have their needs fully serviced and fully anticipated. That's great. Patty, Simon, thank you very much. You're thank welcome. you, Josie. And thank you for watching.